So we talked about what interior points look like and what accumulation points look like. Those are the two big ones because they define for us what it means to be an open set if all of the points in our set are interior points, and also what it means to be a closed set, namely the set contains all of its accumulation points. Um, let's talk about isolated next. So the definition of isolated is a point of the set for which there exists a C, so that this isn't universal, this is existential. So there exists some arm length, even if it's just one arm length, um, that has the property that if I reach out my arms to that length, and then I intersect with E, the only element of E that I contain is myself. So I'm isolated if I can reach out my arms and the only element of E that I hit is myself. What's an example of an isolated point in this set? I like the word isolated because it's really evocative, right? Seven is out there all on its own. What's a value of C that I could choose to show that this is in fact an isolated point? Anything less than two, so let's choose one. So again, all these definitions have open intervals as part of their DNA. So here's the open interval from six to eight. If I take the open interval from six to eight and I intersect it with the set E, what do I get? The only thing I get is seven, right? Seven is the only point of E which is within this particular arm's reach of seven. Right? I'm isolated because I can reach out and I'm not touching any other elements of E right, when I reach out. So that's, that's the definition for isolated. Um, so here's a question. Is it possible for an open set to have an isolated point? Another way to think of that question is, is it possible for an interior point to be an isolated point? Why not? Well, right, they, they contradict. So if I, if I have an interior point, that means that no matter how much I reach out my arms, I'm remaining a subset of E, right? Uh, hmm. If there exists a C such that x minus C to x plus C is a subset of the interval E. Well, how many points are there inside of this open interval? For any value of c, how many points are within x minus c to x plus c? At least one. In fact, better than that, infinitely many points. There are infinitely many real numbers between x minus c and x plus c. But if it's a subset of e, by definition of interior, and then I intersect it with e, I'm just going to get this interval as the intersection, which has infinitely many points in it. So for an interior point, this intersection will always have infinitely many elements. And because x is only one element, that must mean that there's another one in there as well. So interior points can never be isolated. Therefore, open sets cannot have interior, uh, sorry, open sets cannot have isolated points. So the last one we want to talk about real quick is boundary. Um, this is the one that has, I think, kind of the longest definition by word count. A point is a boundary point if, however much I reach out my arms, I'm going to both have a point of E within arm's reach, but also I'm going to have a point which is not in E within arm's reach. So if I'm a boundary point, then no matter how much I reach out my arms, that's what we call C, right? No matter how much I reach out my arms, I'm going to be able to reach both a point of E and also a point not in E. So what might be an example of a boundary point in our example over here? Any endpoint of one of our interval components? Uh, yeah, well, you said endpoint, so I, I, I'm going to agree with that. Uh, so let's choose, I don't know, 10, maybe? So here's my question. Is 10 a boundary point for this <coughs> set? I'm going to reach out my arms, and I will definitely contain a point of E, but also a point not of E. Please repair this typo <laughs> on your sheet. Um, because when I said before that accumulation points were the only types of points that we don't require to be in the set, I misspoke. We also need to allow for the fact that boundary points might not be. Uh, oh, wait. Hmm. No, hang on, hang on. So we do allow, at least in the definition of our book, we do allow for boundary points not to belong to the set. So what would you say are all of the boundary points um, 
of the set that we have down here. Negative 1 and 5 are boundary points. 10 is a boundary point. Yeah, what about 7? Boundary point? Yeah. If I stand at 7 and I reach out to the left and to the right by some amount, any amount, right, I'm not only going to include an element of E, specifically what element of E do I know I'm going to include? 7. But I'm also always going to have some elements that are not in E. That's because 7 happens to be an isolated point. another question. Is it always true, let's take 3 for example, 3 is an interior point because there exists a C such that if I reach out by C on either side, I'm going to always remain all of those points within the, within the set. Um, is it possible for an interior point to be a boundary point? How? In the definition of boundary point, this has to work for all values of C. So no matter how long or short my arms are, right, I have to include both points of the set and points not of the set. And so the fact that there exists even this one example where my arms have a length of, let's say, 1, okay, where I don't have points outside of my set, that means that 3 is not a boundary point. Okay. So, and that, as you might expect, that means that interior points cannot be boundary points of a set. Because interior points, by their definition, have room to reach that keeps them just within the set E, and they never get outside of the set E right, within that amount of room. Okay. 